Greetings again everyone and welcome to another lens review, this time we are studying the new Maker 85mm f1.8 STM, which is available now for only 200 US dollars or 165 pounds here in the UK. It's a full frame lens which is currently only for Sony's mirrorless E-mount cameras, full frame or APS-C. It's a new autofocus version of an older manual focus lens of theirs that I tested out about three years ago now. That older lens had a number of issues but it was very cheap, just like this newer lens, so let's see what improvements Maker have made with this autofocus version. Remember, even a relatively low quality 85mm f1.8 lens can still get you some pretty stunning images and particularly nice portrait pictures. I'd like to thank Maker for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation but as usual this is a totally independent review. The build quality here is cheap and cheerful. The lens is lightweight, feeling hollow and a bit plasticky, and there's a large gap between the rear glass element and the lens mount, which leads me to believe this could be an old optical design originally intended for digital SLR cameras. The rear mount is at least made of metal, but there's no weather ceiling to be seen here. There is a micro USB port though, for future firmware updates. The lens's only control points are an auto manual focus switch and a large plastic manual focus ring, which turns sort of smoothly but feels a bit wobbly. As you can see here, the lens exhibits a fair bit of focus breathing, zooming in as you focus more closely. Here I'm actually struggling to manually focus pull while in video mode, as you might be able to tell the focus position keeps snapping forward to a position that's, that's just out of focus, there's some issue with the focus mechanism here. I found this happening about 20% of the time in video mode and it was obviously frustrating. Turning the camera off and removing then replacing the lens seemed to fix the problem more often than not. When it comes to autofocus performance, the lens's motor works quite quickly, silently and relatively accurately. Here's some footage of it working on a good day, but it doesn't work consistently, sometimes choosing to completely bug out, necessitating removing and replacing the lens from the camera, like in video mode, which can be bothersome. Perhaps Maker can improve things with a future firmware update. The lens comes with a relatively deep, plastic, petal-shaped hood. Its filter size is 67mm wide, it does not have its own image stabilisation, however if your camera has in-body stabilisation then it will work fine with this lens, unlike the older manual focus version from three years ago. Overall, it's pretty low build quality here, the lens feels a bit too cheap and plasticky. The autofocus motor works quite quickly, silently and relatively accurately, so it's mostly fine to use, but as I mentioned it doesn't work consistently, sometimes just failing completely, and you have to turn the camera off and on again. Ok, well, let's move on and look at image quality. We'll test it today on a full frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor and in-camera corrections turned on. At f1.8 we immediately see plenty of things going on in the middle of the image. The good news is that there's a lot of sharpness being captured here, less encouraging is the low contrast and the alarmingly high level of purple fringing, the kind you'd expect to see on a lens designed from about 25 years ago. Over in the corners, image quality deteriorates rather a lot. Stop down to f2.8 for more sharpness and contrast in those corners, and back in the middle, that purple fringing has mostly cleared up. Stop down to f4 and the middle looks excellent now, although contrast is still just average. Over in the corners, image quality is getting pretty decent. At f5.6 the corners look excellent. The lens stays the sharp down to about f11. Overall, it's a rather weak performance from the lens at wide apertures, although if you're not shooting a scene with highly contrasting edges, for example if you're taking a portrait picture, then the lens does offer you very good sharpness in the middle of the image. I do wish the lens had a bit more contrast to it though. Let's turn off those in-camera corrections now and look at vignetting and distortion. The lens projects a moderate pincushion distortion here, nothing too disturbing though, in fact portrait photographers tend to appreciate that as it makes your subject look a little thinner. At f1.8 vignetting isn't too heavy either, with the image corners only looking a little darker than the middle. Stop down to f2.8 and f4 for those corners to quickly brighten up. 
The lens's minimum focus distance is 85 centimeters, so it won't be mistaken for a macro lens anytime soon. Image quality at close distances sees that already poor contrast really bottoming out. Stop down as far as f2.8 and the contrast picks up considerably. Stop down to f4 and close up image quality becomes excellent. Let's see how the lens handles bright lights. Flaring is a problem here, but not as much as glaring, which causes yet another major drop in contrast, so you'll definitely want to use that lens hood as often as possible. Now let's see about the quality of this lens's bokeh. Honestly, I quite like it. Those out of focus backgrounds look pretty smooth to me in most situations, although some colourful highlighting is sometimes present in the middle distance. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. Here at f1.8, you can observe a clear purple tint to bokeh highlights in the foreground and yellow in the backgrounds. At f2.8, it's still sticking around, but at f4, it's mostly gone. Overall, well, what do you expect for $200? Both the lens's build and image quality are basically serviceable, with a few issues. I do particularly wish that the autofocus was a bit more dependable, and that we saw less colour fringing and better contrast. The lens is capable of getting some very nice portrait pictures for you, though, and at $200, you can say that it presents a good value offering for those on a very low budget, but who can't do without autofocus. You know what I can't do without? My wonderful community of Patreon supporters. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone over there who are helping me to keep these reviews going strong. Not only do they get to feel warm and fuzzy inside, but I put all kinds of exclusive content over there for them, including exclusive videos every month. Check it out, and ciao for now.